Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. Intel's Arrow Lake processors will be very interesting indeed, because despite significant improvements in IPC and architecture, as well as efficiency, from what I'm hearing, there will be significant cuts in clock frequency. I also want to touch on the same subject for Zen 5 as well, as I've been hearing some very intriguing things concerning that. But I also want to focus quite significant portions of the video on Intel's Battle Mage, because these next generation GPUs have a lot of potential. So I want to discuss the performance targets and some pretty significant updates. That is, of course, after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So recently, Hardware Lux have actually managed to confirm BMG G10 chips within Intel's Failure Analysis Lab tour. Basically, they were taking a look around, and of course, they essentially saw things that they probably shouldn't have. Now, my guess is that Intel didn't get particularly upset by this as obviously sometimes this stuff can be kind of uh, interesting in terms of PR. So a few weeks ago I actually had released a video where I'd stated that from what I was hearing engineering sample chips were actually starting to come back to the labs basically they were starting to bring up the chip. So this does match up with my own information. Now the performance targets of Battle Mage from what I've been hearing is roughly that of an RTX 4080. But the concerning thing is, some of my sources are now telling me that early chips are not actually hitting these targets. Now, they are in compute-related tasks, however, gaming is more on par with an RTX 4070, give or take, depending, of course, on the game. Now, what I understand is, however, that this is most likely due to early engineering sample issues. Now, it is hardware-related, but it probably can be worked out based upon what I've been hearing. The G10 chip, though, is the flagship part, and I'd actually released a roadmap um, basically stating that the target for this part is going to be around 225 watts. With Q1 next year, we're going to have the part start to ship to AIBs, from what I'm hearing anyway, and a general release, in other words, when you can actually buy the damn thing, more likely slated for some time in Q2. Now, this has not changed in the last several months. This roadmap is getting a little bit older now i released it earlier this year but to my understanding there has been absolutely no changes within intel strategy and again they are bringing up the chip and it seems like at this point anyway it's going to be a very interesting part indeed now i have spoken about the specifications several times in the past and despite the fact that i've got pretty solid information concerning things like well, the performance info, <laughs> I have actually had a little bit of pushback concerning the actual configuration of the chip. So the most likely uh, configuration that I've heard so far is 56 XC cores operating at around three gigahertz. We all know about the story with clock frequency and targets and the fact that they can be missed or surpassed, but that is allegedly what Intel are aiming for around three gigahertz. This will be backed up with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, of course, on a 256-bit bus, and a large chunk of L2. I've heard both 112 and 116 megabytes as the L2 cache. Now, this is where things get a little bit interesting. As older information I... Uh, released actually stated that the number of XC cores was 64. If you're unfamiliar with the A770, which of course is the first generation of uh, Intel discrete GPUs, uh, that actually would be double that, the, um, the A770. But then I was being told that no, 64 is not correct, 56 is the correct number, but now I'm getting mixed information. Honestly, I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. At the moment, I think that I'm going to hedge my bets and probably still say that 56 is the most likely, again with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6, 
but I'll try to get more information. And at the moment, I'm just going to put an asterisk there essentially and say that this is probable, but obviously this could change. Now, I also wanted to throw in some information concerning Zen 5 and Intel's Arrow Lake as well. I actually meant to put this in a video last week, but just didn't get around to it because there were so many other topics that the video was already getting kind of long. So, um, there was actually a report with Olrak on Twitter, and they basically stated that the Zen 5 die used in the Ryzen CPUs uh, is going to basically be the same as the current generation product. Now, as far as I understand, this is actually true. Again, I have, think I've even reported this a couple of times, or at least mentioned it in passing. There's not a whole lot to say about this at the moment. It does mean that there's going to be some interesting questions concerning how bandwidth starved uh, the Ryzen CPUs are going to be. I've heard that it's possibly not as bad as perhaps you may imagine because of various architectural changes across the board but it will be very interesting to see how memory uh, frequencies scale with zen 5 furthermore it will be very interesting to see how vcache actually benefits zen 5 as well i've heard that it's probably in terms of percentage difference roughly the same as zen 4 but Obviously, things can change, and my information, A, could be incorrect, and B, we're not exactly referring to, well, final production sample C silicon either. But on the subject of Ryzen 8000, uh, I also want to give a small update concerning the clock frequency. So, um, I believe that it's likely at this point the clock frequency will probably be around the same as Ryzen 7000, perhaps a little bit less. So I've actually said in a previous video that uh, some of my sources are insistent, they are very insistent, and these sources have been really accurate with multiple things in the past, that uh, Final Production Silicon is targeting around 6 GHz. Now, the reason I say, of course, around 6 GHz is when it comes to CPUs, especially from AMD, clock frequency can differ based upon so many different factors but yeah i've heard around six gigahertz is what they are targeting of course that's not with all threads and cores loaded but other sources are now becoming a lot more uh let's just say persuasive that the clock frequency is probably not going to be that it's probably going to be closer to around ryzen 7000 or more likely even we could see a small regression now remember the power um, you know, the TDP is identical between Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 8000. Um, so basically, most of the performance improvements are going to be IPC related. Of, of course, as we all know, the cores and thread counts are identical. So it's going to be, I think, a case of Zen 5 being really impressive. But I think it's going to be very much like Zen 2 to Zen 3 of, you know, a big IPC bump. And uh, it's not going to be like we saw with Zen 4, where, of course, it was all down to clock frequency. Now, another thing actually I want to talk about since we're talking about CPUs is Intel's Arrow Lake. I've spoken quite exhaustively about the specifications of Arrow Lake previously. And, of course, one of the big things that we've learned is that the performance course Lion Cove are almost certainly not going to feature hyperthreading, which is going to be very interesting indeed. Now, the architecture of uh, Arrow Lake seemingly is very efficient, which is obviously really good because, well, efficiency is just good across the board. But it seems that well, there's going to be most likely a pretty big regression in terms of clock frequency. I've had now a couple of sources tell me that low um, to mid 4 gigahertz is actually looking quite likely with Arrow Lake. And now, obviously, that is a huge clock frequency cut versus what we have with the current Intel processors. And it's going to be very interesting whether this is the case or not, because if it is, it's going to be just, it's going to be nothing short of well, just fascinating to see how the various applications from games to, let's say, Adobe Premiere to, you know, Blender and God knows what else scale across different, um, different processors and different thread counts. Because not only, of course, do you have Zen 5, which is going to, again, be, you know, up to 16 cores, 32 threads, but we all know the situation there. But, of course, with Arrow Lake, you have the performance cores as well as the energy-efficient cores, but the performance cores no longer have hyper-threading. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this scales. If I had to guess, and it is a guess, I think probably Zen 5 is going to be faster, but 
we are of course talking about architectures which have not essentially been released yet so it's very difficult to know these are most likely going to launch next year and i think that um the next like 12 to 24 months in technology is going to be really interesting to my understanding rdna 4 is going to launch in the first half of next year so that of course is going to be 2024 if you're watching this at some point in the future uh, and obviously, as we all know at this point, it's almost certain that those are only going to be the uh, the lower end chips like Navi uh, 43 and 44. And the high end ones are essentially going to be really relying on RDNA 5. And, you know, I've already reported this in another video, but just to, you know, remind you guys that it looks like that's around six quarters, maybe seven quarters later. So essentially the tail end of 2025 at the latest. So I think it's just going to be absolutely fascinating to see how CPUs evolve as well as GPUs in the high-end space. Um, there's been a lot of developments, of course, that have happened over the last uh, couple of days, including things like FSR3, which I will be covering quite extensively. Uh, I've been away on vacation, so I just wanted to catch you guys up on this stuff because I've had a bunch of messages regarding some of the stuff for uh, Zen 5 as well as the... Uh, um, Arrow Lake stuff as well, so I just wanted to kind of give a bit of a bitsy video today. I'm writing a script for FSR 3 and as well as a couple of other things as well. I suspect FSR 3 will also work quite well on the PS5 as well. We've seen that it, of course it does uh, officially work on the Xbox Series console, but I see no reason honestly it won't work on the PS5 as well. It's going to be absolutely fascinating to see how FSR 3 is adopted, and it will also be very curious to see how the various, um, you know, the, the generated frames in terms of the quality do end up comparing against DLSS 3. With that said, guys, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.